Hi everyone, welcome to the second Sunday of Lent. I am so glad you're here with us today. Today I'm going to give a little reflection on one of the readings from Mass today. Um, but before I do that, I really just wanted to take a moment to just encourage you because I know that second week of Lent struggle. I think oftentimes in the beginning of Lent, we're just so excited. Well, at least I can be really excited. Can't wait to sacrifice. Can't wait to do some hard stuff for the Lord. Um, but sometimes by the time we get to that second week, it's it's starting to become real and it's starting to become a struggle. So I just want to take a moment to just really uh, encourage you. Whatever you've decided to do or whatever you've decided to give up, maybe you've already totally messed it up. Maybe you've messed it up a bunch of times. Maybe you haven't even started yet. But I just want to tell you that it's okay. It's never too late to start, and it's also never too late to start again. Um, so today's a new day, and I also just wanted to remind you that you're not alone. We're all one big body of Christ, so we're all on this journey together. You're not alone in this. You're never alone. And yeah, we're going to do this, and it's going to be great, and we're going to get through it together. So anyways, I just wanted to tell you that really quickly. Um, so with today's readings, I really wanted to focus on the first reading today, actually. The first reading is the story. It's when the Lord establishes his covenant with Abram. And it is from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. So I will read this reading to you really quickly. It says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who curses you I will curse. And by you all the families of the earth shall bless themselves. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. Okay, so that's a story we know very well, story of Abram. And just a recap of last Sunday, the first reading is also a story that we know very well. So it's when Adam and Eve eat of the apple, they eat of the tree, and they break this perfect relationship that we had with the Lord. And then in today's reading, we see this is the third out of seven covenants that the Lord makes with his people. We can see this throughout salvation history. We see that the Lord is constantly promising his people. He's, he's making covenants with us. He's reminding us that he's not forgotten. He's not forgotten us at all. And he's coming back for us. He's, he's coming to back to restore this relationship that's been broken. Um, and he's had a plan this whole time. He's always, it's so cool to look back at salvation history and to just to see how this has been brought to fruition. But anyways, so then this new covenant is established, another story we all know very well, when the Lord sends his only son, Jesus, to die for us on the cross and to conquer death. Um, and not only that, so the Lord, yeah, he dies for us and, like I say, conquers sin and death. And then the Lord also establishes the church, which is so beautiful. So, friends, first of all, I want to tell you, this is the best news. We are living in this covenant right now. And because Jesus has done this and because Jesus is the bridegroom and has established our church, this new covenant is basically like a marriage that has taken place with us and with the Lord. And it, my friends, I, I just don't believe it matters. I don't believe it matters if you're called to religious life or to be a priest or you're called to be married and have children, whatever your call is in life. I think you're called to be a bride or a bridegroom of the Lord. And I believe that this is by our baptism and by us receiving the Lord in the Eucharist, this marriage, guys, it has already taken place. It's already happened. Think of a, a, a real a marriage. Two people become one flesh. So we have, this can happen right now. We have become one with the Lord. And I don't know about you guys, but with me and my own prayer, the Lord constantly has to remind me of this. But because of my own brokenness and because of my wounds, I often think, I'm very wounded, I often think that when I mess up or when I do something wrong or when, you know, I allow the Lord to see this new, this new part of me that maybe I've been hiding from him, I often think the Lord might just change his mind about me or he might just leave me or things are going to get really hard and then the Lord's just going to abandon me. My friends, it's not true and it just, it can't be true because like I said, this covenant, like we have become one with the Lord. So he will, he truly will never, ever leave us or abandon us. This covenant is constantly happening. Also, the Lord is constantly drawing us to himself. Um, this new covenant, the Lord wants to bring us to this new promised land, which is heaven. 
And in the meantime, the Lord is, he's constantly bringing us, bringing us closer and closer. And he's constantly bringing us to himself. So just want to remind you one more time, like it's in scripture, nothing can separate us from the love of the Lord. So there's nothing you can do or not do to mess this up. It's just, it's happened. This marriage has taken place. And it's so beautiful because every time, and we're still sinful, so we still mess up. Sometimes we turn away from the Lord, but the church has given us this beautiful sacrament of reconciliation, and we go confess our sins, and this relationship is restored. And not only that, I believe every time that happens, every time we go to confession, every time we receive the Lord in the Eucharist, He is constantly, He's bringing us closer and closer and closer. He's constantly there. It's just, it's just who He is. His being just draws us. We were created for Him. So his being just, it just does that. It draws us to himself. Um, so he's constantly getting closer and closer to us. The problem, my friends, is that sometimes we don't allow the Lord to do that. Sometimes we maybe just don't see it happening. Or sometimes maybe we believe we're not worthy of it. Or sometimes I think, too, we get scared. We get afraid. That happens to me all the time. I know I, I know the Lord wants to be intimate with me, but sometimes I'm like, whoa, Lord, that's too much. Like we get, we're afraid of intimacy, um, I think because of the fall. So sometimes we just want to run, but the Lord is constantly there. He never leaves us. He's always, he's just, he's so gentle and patient. He's just waiting for us. Um, so anyways, my friends, I think that Lent is just a really good time, especially as things are hard and Maybe it's a struggle and maybe we don't tangibly see this promise right now. Um, but I think Lent is an awesome time to just remember this, um, to remember why we're doing this and, and why we're here and just to allow us to wait in hope. Like that's what we're doing on this side of heaven. We're just, we're waiting in hope. We're trusting, we're believing that the Lord is drawing him close to himself. And one day we will be in the new promised land. But until then, we have to, I think there's just so much going on in the world. There's so, I mean, we know this. There's so much noise, distractions, the media. It's so easy for us. It happens with me all the time. The Lord will tell me something in prayer. And then the next week, things are getting hard. And I just totally forget everything. And I panic. But the Lord is constantly there. We're in this covenant. We're one with Christ. Everything's going to be okay. But I think Lent is a really good time to remind us of this, to remind of us of this promise um, so that we just remember, you know, who we are, who we belong to, and where we're going. So anyways, 